Hello and welcome to future YouTube viewers to this video in which I'm covering uh, the stupidest YouTube account in existence, which is Liberal Hive Mind. Okay, uh, now I've covered this channel a few times. Um, quite quite popular quite popular videos amongst the Liberal Hive Mind viewers. You could almost say that it's actually them that are the Hive Mind, not me, not the Liberals. In any case, in any case, okay. If we click on this here videos what's so fantastic is you can you can see the point okay so let's scroll down a little bit right you can see the point that liberal hive minds brain broke okay you can actually pinpoint it it's glorious we're going to watch a couple of videos today because we're going to really take in the uh we're going to take in the right wing hopium that, that this dude was huffing through to the copium through to finally the ropium Okay, here we go. So look, you can see here loads of pro-Trump stuff, loads of anti-Biden stuff, blah, blah, blah. I can't win this. Joe Biden's crumbling. CNN's panicking. Incredible numbers of Democrats supporting. Leftists are going nuts. Trump can win. I'm real smart. Dems huge panic. And then we get to this one. Trump's landslide. Here's my final prediction for the 2020 presidential election easy win let's have a little watch so now with the benefit of hindsight what we can do is we can watch this video and just see what his takes are okay let's have a little look we'll quickly we'll quickly get through this hey guys welcome to the liberal hive mind a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left except this time we're not going to be solely focused on the abundant hypocrisy of the left we're rather solely focused on predicting the 2020 electoral college now i've been predicting that the president's going to win for months now but i've never gone state Ooh. by state telling you guys exactly what i think is going to happen in some of these key pivotal swing states so that's what we're going to do so now what you guys see on the screen here is the baseline these are the states that are not toss-ups in my mind you might notice that texas is not dark red it's light red and the only reason that i'm putting it like that is due to the fact that i think the margin of victory in texas might shrink a little bit from 2016 mostly because of the potential fraud that we've seen happening in that state specifically. In fact, there's a Democrat- Oh my God! Pre-Cope posting about fraud in his, in his prediction video. These people are so pathetic. <laughs> Pre-Cope posting about fraud. <laughs> Oh my god, what a fucking moron. An official right now in Texas that's facing election fraud charges. And honestly, that's gonna be a theme throughout this entire thing. These results are barring no funny business from the Democrats. But let's get right into it. The first thing, the most important thing is the Sun Belt. If the president doesn't win the Sun Belt, it's over for him. And the most key pivotal state is of course Florida. I think he's gonna take Florida with relative ease. And that's of course because of the one factor that everyone's been talking about is increase in support from the Latino or Hispanic community. Florida has a huge population of Cubans, Venezuelans, and Puerto Ricans, all of which are getting behind the president in historic numbers. Miami-Dade is closer than it ever was before, and the president's pretty much outperforming not only in Miami-Dade in respect to what he did in 2016, but pretty much across the entire state. This means if he closes the gap a little bit in the south of Florida and everything else stays stagnant, I think he's going to win Florida by maybe two or three percent. I think he's going to make gains on what we saw in 2016. So we'll put that as likely GOP. Now the next. Okay. Yep. So so far so good. Okay. So far so good. Well done. Well done. Let's see. Let's see how we go from here, though. Next state is, of course, Georgia, and I think a very I'll similar phenomenon is going on here. I'll, this is, of course, down, a Republican stronghold, and Georgia has a very high population percentage of Black voters. We've seen the polls. We've seen Rasmussen. The president is skyrocketing in support when it comes to the black vote. And of course, Robert Cahaley just came out saying that the president could potentially get 20% of the black vote in 2020. This means, in my mind, Georgia is pretty much another easy pick in the Sun Belt for the current president. I think he's going to win this by a similar margin to Florida, maybe 2 or 3%. Next state that the president has to win is... Oops. Do you notice as well, the pre-cope is so good on this, he can very literally... Just say, oh, well, if it doesn't go the way I say, it's because of fraud. North Carolina, the polls are incredibly tight in this state specifically. A lot of people are saying that Joe Biden might take North Carolina. If that's the case, the president's in big trouble. But I really don't think that that's going to happen. The president was just in North Carolina and the suburbs and the rural parts are showing up in such extreme numbers. I think it's going to completely overwhelm the state. And with it being a statistical tie in the polling average right now, I'm leaning towards the undecided voter splitting for the current president. So this one I think is going to be, again, a pickup for the president, although I think the margin is going to be quite small this time round. Of course, the last state in the Sun Belt 
that we have to cover is Arizona. And this, of course, we have a very similar factor over here with the Latino vote increase. Arizona itself has always been a Republican state. I don't think it's going to stay like that forever, similar to Texas. They're trending towards the blue, but I don't think this is the time that Arizona is going to go blue, especially not with the president making gains in the Latino vote. And I've seen a lot of polls in Arizona, of course, from Trafalgar Insider Advantage, where he's winning by three to four percent. And that's not counting undecided voters. I think they're going to split for the president pretty much like usual. And of course, with this state at a statistical tie on the RCP average, if we consider undecided voters and if we consider the silent Trump voter that these pollsters are not getting to, this is easily a state that I think the president can win by two, maybe three, four percent. I'd probably say around three, three point uh, five. Uh, but I think Arizona is going to go in the red column quite easily. All right. So now we got to do Ohio and Iowa. Let's start off with Iowa. Yeah, so obviously um, he's assuming that all Latino voters are going to vote conservative, right? And obviously we know that's not true. <laughs> like, obviously um, um, <clears throat> Latinos that live in, in Florida are like generally ex -Cu you know, Cubans of Cuban descent. And for obvious reasons, they tend to sway conservative rather than anything resembling, you know, left leftism in their mind, right? Um, but obviously, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. You know, I don't want to use, you know, look, I'm not going to use the word because some people don't like the word. I don't want to get into that malarkey, okay? But they do tend to vote conservative, you know? But obviously there's Latino people in other areas of the United States that aren't from that particular area so they will have different perspectives and will vote differently but this i think is not even going to be close we've heard a whole lot of whispers from democrats saying iowa ohio could potentially go blue i think this is blasphemous absolutely no chance in my mind in fact the des moines iowa registered voter poll just came out and the president is leading by seven percent on that poll historically it's been very accurate and with the president having a seven point lead there again not counting undecided voters i think this is a pretty easy prediction this is going to go red in a complete dark dominating performance, probably around 5 to 8%. 8% on the high end, 5% if Democrats can get a high voter turnout, but I don't think they stand a chance. Now, Ohio, very similar. A lot of whispers that Joe Biden's going to take Ohio this time. Absolutely not. I think he's underperforming where Hillary Clinton was in the polls last time. And we just had a Democrat politician two days ago from Ohio coming out and saying that he thinks the president is doing exceedingly well. I think that's a direct quote in Democrat districts. I'm making the exact same prediction for Ohio. I think it's going to go from probably six to even 9% for the current president. So that's pretty much going to be a strong red on that one. That's going in the Republicans column. Absolutely. Now, before we get to the Rust Belt, before we get to Nevada, I think Nebraska's second district is going to just slightly go for the president, a 1% margin. I think Maine's second district is going to go very strongly for the current president, just based on polling and based on historical precedent. I think Nebraska second and Maine second are definitely going in the president's column. And so that puts the president at 260 in a very conservative manner. These are states that are easy calls. Now these grace- Oh, easy calls. He's made a couple of mistakes. I know, look, <clears throat> obviously people, okay, listen, listen. Yeah, he's just going to predict that he wins everywhere else. Here's the thing, right? It's easy to look back on hindsight. And obviously, some, think, some predictions are right, some predictions are wrong, okay? But this is what I'm talking about. This is the rightoid hubris that I'm talking about, right? Where they were so busy sucking themselves dry, thinking that Trump was going to get a clean sweep and absolutely smash it, that they failed to see some of the issues and what they, the, like, the lines they were thinking along, you know? You know, it's it's like this sort of like, oh, it's an easy win. Oh, you know, he'll easily win this, he'll easily win that. And also, if you listen to what he's saying, he's only looking at like certain polls, right? I can't remember the name of the pollster that he said, but there's one pollster that he, he said that tends to lean more towards Trump in, in most polling that they do, right? So, no, it was, what is it? It's Raz something, the Raz something one. You know, that tends to lean towards Trump in all of their polling. Rasmussen, that's it, yeah. If you look at their polling, they tend to lean more towards Trump. So, you know, he's not looking at the broad picture. He's not looking at the broad picture of polling. He's just looking at the specific things, you know. Yeah, it's their zero critical thinking. It's literal just like, oh my God, Trump's going to win. 
jerking himself off into his own mouth, you know? States that are left, these are the states that are going to decide the fate of the 2020 election, and by virtue, the fate of Western civilization as we know it. Of course, we have to start off with the most important one, and that's Pennsylvania. Joe Biden has been tanking in the state of Pennsylvania, and I mean seriously tanking. He is now within the margin of error on the RCP average at, I believe, about 2.7%. And so I'd say right now, Pennsylvania is easily a statistical tie in terms of polling. What scares me in Pennsylvania is their attorney general literally said today that the election is already predetermined and Joe Biden has won. I think this is far from true. There's a whole lot of ballots that have not been cast yet, and the president can easily win with a massive surge. And I think he will win, barring no funny business. Here's the thing. Western in Pennsylvania is fracking town. I think even the Pittsburgh suburbs could potentially swing a little bit more towards the right. Northwestern Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, like the Western civilization stuff. Like this is, you know, at the very least signaling towards that direction, if not an explicit endorsement of that sort of ideology. You know? This is like Erie County. I think the president is going to absolutely dominate in, and it really depends on how the vote splits in Pittsburgh and, of course, Philadelphia. We know the Pittsburgh Gazette, I believe it's called. I had to Google that one. It's the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. It's both of them. All right, interesting. They just endorsed the president, and in Philadelphia, the police and firefighters union just endorsed the president for the first time in American history. They endorsed a GOP candidate. And so I think the president is in fact going to make some gains in Philadelphia, potentially in the suburbs, potentially in the city as well. And I think Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, the president's going to do really well in. My prediction, barring no funny business, is that the president will win Pennsylvania by maybe 1%, potentially even less than 1%. Next up is Michigan. This is a really hard one to gauge. From a conservative perspective, I don't want to give the president Michigan. But this is where my bias comes in, and I think that the president's going to do way better than a lot of people are expecting. The first thing is the black vote. A lifelong Democrat city council member in Flint, Michigan, just endorsed Donald Trump for president. I think that's going to have an impact. I think his increase in support from the black community is going to have an impact as well. But more specifically, if you guys have been following Ronna McDaniel, who's the chairman to the RNC, she's been releasing little snippets of data from Trump rallies. And in Michigan and Wisconsin specifically, over 50% of the people that are attending some of Trump's rallies are not registered Republicans. Here's where it's going to get really surprising. If the president makes gains in minority vote in these two states and pulls more disenfranchised legacy Democrats to vote for him instead of Joe Biden, and we're not seeing the same phenomenon of Republicans voting for Joe Biden at the same rate, then I think he's going to take it. That's the prediction that I'm making. It's not exactly scientific. It's more of a feeling thing. Of course, using the data from Trump rallies, which is anecdotal at best, but I'm making the prediction that the president is going to win both of these states by a hair. I think it's going to be incredibly close, but I'm giving those two states specifically to the president by a very, very thin margin. I know people, look, I know people are saying, and listen, I know people are saying like, oh, he's pretty close so far. He's, he's literally just giving all of these states to like, to Trump. This, this is like, this is antithetical to, to, to what people were saying was going to happen. Less than 1%. Now, Minnesota, there's a whole lot of talk in this election season that Minnesota could potentially flip. And of course it can. But I think Democrat propaganda is a little bit too strong, especially in Democrat strongholds. And Minnesota has been blue for a very long time. Really, the question here is undecided voters and GOP turnout. But it's going to be hard considering how many registered Democrats there are in this state specifically. I think it's a little bit of a pipe dream right now to think that the president's going to win it. But there's a chance. There's actually a good chance. Honestly, I'm going to say Minnesota is 60-40 for me. The president has a 40% chance of winning this state. But my prediction, since I've been a little bit cocky, I've let my bias come in here. I think for some of these other states, we're going to put Minnesota in the tilt Democrat column. Now, the final, final state that we have to talk about is Nevada. This one, again, my brain is telling me it's going to go red this time. It's extremely close. It's within the margin of error, actually, in the RCP average, which means the president does, in fact, have a path of victory through Arizona, Nevada, and I believe Wisconsin, potentially Michigan. He doesn't even have to win Pennsylvania at that point. And I know that that's possible. My brain, however, is telling me that Nevada is probably going to end up going blue. But at the end of the day, ah... It's going red, boys. It's going red. It's going to go red. Once again, oh. by a hair. I think if the president wins here, it's going to be below 1%, maybe like 1.2%. This is a little bit cocky, but actually, I think there's a good possibility that that happens. I mean, if you think about it, Nevada, in terms of polling, is closer than Wisconsin is, and I'm willingly able to give Wisconsin to the president. It's actually more likely that the president wins Nevada than he does Wisconsin, but for some reason, I'm willing to give him Wisconsin quite easily. But that's pretty much it. This is my final prediction. I think the president's going to win 
312 electoral votes, Joe Biden's gonna win 226. This, however, is the oh. Republican surge scenario. This is the Oops. scenario where Republicans come out in incredible numbers, unprecedented numbers, completely swarm the polls and absolutely decimate the little bit of lead that the Democrats have created for themselves in early voting. It's probably more likely that the president's gonna win maybe like a little bit over 270, 290, something like that. But my gut instinct right now is that the president is going to win bigger than he did in 2016 because frankly, we're seeing him have better numbers in early voting metrics than he did against Hillary Clinton. His approval rating is higher, He's an incumbent president that saw the greatest economic boom in modern history. And I think undecided voters and even some legacy Democrats are going to feel more comfortable with a known commodity in Donald Trump than a unknown commodity who's going to destroy industry, raise their taxes, and most likely get kicked out by the 25th Amendment and Kamala is going to be the president. So this is my prediction. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think. You can also tweet at me on my Twitter. Show me your maps. Give me your predictions. It'll be fun to go through some of them. Maybe if I'm streaming tomorrow during the election, we can go through all the different predictions. So tweet at Liberal hive mind put your map oh, and i'll have yeah. a whole collection of them but that's what i got for you guys make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell to be notified every single time yeah i mean share the videos as much what as possible. it's not it's so much a prediction it's not so much a prediction as it is oh there's a gray state oh just paint that red paint that red red for you red for you red for you red for you yeah joe biden the unknown commodity yeah i know that's uh, that's some big brain polit political analysis there. Anyway, look. So that was that was um, that was on the third of November. Okay. That was the third of November. Now, let's have a little look. So there's another video I want to watch. Okay. <laughs> Leftists are going insane. Dems across the nation are preparing for a Trump landslide. Okay. I don't know. Leftist, look. OMG, I J S U T realized I can say this. Trump lost. Thanks very much for the bits, Catalina. Um, so yeah, the leftists are apparently going insane. Let's let's find out what's going on in this one anyway. Let's have a little look. Here we go. We're insane, apparently. Whoa. Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Hang on a sec. Well, hold on. This. This is the meme of the day. Apparently. Is this. Is this. Is this the meme of the day? <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. Look, I don't normally like laughing at people making spelling errors, but, uh, hmm. I mean, that's pretty cringe, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a pretty pathetic meme. That's uh, impact, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's like 50 trillion people. Yeah, I know, I can't even really make it out. It's like it's like the worst game of Where's Waldo I've ever played. What a terrible meme. And that's your meme of the day. Just pathetic. Totally pathetic. Now in 2016, the phenomenon of the SJW freakout, the lunatic liberal, was a very new, interesting phenomenon. Now, four years later, <laughs> it's pretty much the norm. The normalization of Democrat lunacy is a little bit mind-boggling. We've pretty much come to terms with the fact that liberals will lose their minds at every point in turn when things do not go their way. The media ignores it and tries to pretend as if it happens on both sides, but like I've stated a million different times, it doesn't, and you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody who's worried about Trump supporters after after election day if Joe Biden wins. It doesn't exist. The fact of the matter is, conservatives have their heads screwed on straight. Can we say the same thing for Democrats? Mostly, yes. Overall, absolutely not. There is a contingency on the left that is undeniably ridiculous. And that's what we gotta talk about for this video. First of all, the contrast, of course. And second of all, what's happening or what's going to happen if Donald Trump wins in a landslide on November 3rd? It's getting crazy. And you might be surprised at some of the tactics that are going on right now with Antifa and BLM. We'll get into that later, but wait till okay. Let's see what these bozos are doing already. The so bozos. Got a lot of information. Let's see what the bozos are doing. Come on, bring it on. Let's see what these leftist bozos are up to. Who in chat is a leftist bozo? Who here is a le I'm a leftist bozo. Is anyone else a leftist bozo? 
Is anyone else here a leftist bozo? I'm a leftist bozo. Let's see what's going on. ...to cover on this video. But before we get into any of it, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and of course sharing the video as much as possible because we are currently in YouTube jail, YouTube quarantine, and our videos are not being sent out to new viewers, non-subscribed viewers, and our growth has been put in a box. The best way that we can grow this community going forward is by sharing the videos as much as possible. Now with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. Alright, so before we get into anything for this video, I want to start off with something that Kaylee McEnany said. So let's listen to what she's talking about. They are increasing security in Portland and Philadelphia, Lansing, Michigan, Baltimore, Charlottesville, Detroit, Janesville, Wisconsin, Chicago, New York City, and Washington, D.C. Notice what those cities have in common. They are all Democrat cities. What are they saying with these boarding up and the civil unrest that they're expecting? They're saying if you don't choose the left's chosen candidate, we will send the left out to attack you. I, I got some got some news for you, okay? I don't know if these people have been following the online left discourse over the past uh, few months, but Joe Biden is not the left's chosen candidate, okay? Far from it, in fact. Fox News doesn't read theory. Um, yeah, Fox News is not reading the Twitter thread of Stalin Stan 1917 with a picture of Joseph Stalin smoking a big joint with sunglasses on as the profile picture. They're not reading their, their theory that lays out very clearly how not only are they the same, but if anything, uh, Biden is... Uh, <laughs> Significantly worse than Trump. Anyway, look, I don't want to go too much in there. Look, I don't like Biden, okay? So I'm not going to go down that road with it. But, you know, it is a mistake to assume that, that you know, Biden is the left's chosen candidate. And that's as close to extortion as you can get. And Joe Biden has the power to say, stand down to the mob. Will he do it? Uh, this is all the proof you need that the left should not be given federal power. We deserve the great American tradition of democracy, uh, of peaceful elections, of accepting the vote of the American people. But the boarded up windows, the closed down stores tell you all you need to know about the modern American left. Uh, the violence is unacceptable and they are not deserving of federal power. Absolutely correct. Where is Joe Biden? You know, they kept going after the president for saying stand back and stand by about a group that he knew nothing about and also a group that they had completely mischaracterized and slandered, but Joe Biden wouldn't even say anything close to that when it came to BLM and Antifa. This is political intimidation. There's a word for that like I always say, it's called terrorism. This is domestic terrorist threats. Vote for our candidate or else. And it's only one side that's doing it. We know that- uh... Um, okay, I'll, this is, look. This is looking back in hindsight, but with the way things that have panned out, with with the way things have panned out, I mean, I don't know. This is this is all aging like milk, like people people have said. Yeah, when did this video come out? Third of November. Oh dear. And yeah, of course, of course, Donald Trump knows who the Proud Boys are. Like, it's just. It's just asinine to, to suggest that he wouldn't, you know? That for a fact, she said it specifically. Why is it that only Democrat cities are the ones boarding up? Because the only true threat of violence comes from Democrats. It comes from the far left radicals who have been allowed to do whatever they want across the entire nation, well across Democrat strongholds, with near impunity. And the people are not dumb. They know that this threat comes from left wing agitators. Once again, from a Frank Luntz focus group, listen to what this woman had to say. Brittany, do you think there would be riots and violence if Trump were to win on Tuesday night? Um, if he wins, definitely. If not, uh, you're probably not going to hear too, too much. Right. She essentially admits it. The only threat of violence comes... What? That clip was like, what, 10 seconds long? Oh, Heralds. Thank you very much for the sub. Welcome. Hope you're good. Thank you. Glad Colbert called Trump a fascist. Maybe more media that isn't just left tube say it. Thanks very much for the uh, the sub. Appreciate it. It's like, yeah, it's like it's one person and it's a, a tiny segment of like a conversation. It's impossible to ascertain what the context of this is, you know. And of course, yeah, you know, there's no it's no coincidence that it happens to be a black person, a black woman, no less, that he's got he's got saying this stuff.
comes from lefties. There's nothing to worry about if Joe Biden wins. And then another woman in that same group said her intention or a motivating factor for voting is in fact the unrest. Check this out. Okay, if Trump wins, I definitely think we will see rioting. We absolutely. <laughs> Look at this old woman's aesthetic is great. Look at these. <laughs> Look at these palm trees. In 20 years, politics won't be about policy, but only cultural bullshit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Going to be talking about, you know, the, the, the identity of the next James Bond or whatever. Look at this. It's got, I don't know why. This has tickled me. Okay. Yeah, who is, who's Barbara? Why are we, what? Barbara from Florida has got some hot takes, is she? Okay, fair enough. But why should I... What, who is Barbara? Who is Barbara? Oh, you know, listen, Barbara. I'm sure you're lovely. Okay, I'm sure you're an absolutely lovely person. You, you know, whatever. But like, why are we listening to some random woman called Barbara on a Zoom call? I thought this was supposed to be about leftists melting down. And now we've got Barbara with a palm tree background, looking very chill. Who is Barbara? <laughs> Who is Barbara? I don't even know who Barbara is. As you can see, there's planned violence from the left. And I can prove this by showing you this, this clipped Zoom call featuring Barbara, who's 3D projected onto some palm tree background. No idea who she is. Yeah, Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. Florida. Yeah, that's it. Is Barbara Q? These are questions we need answered, okay? Oh God, this video is so funny. I thought, of, and also like, where are these leftist meltdowns? It's just people like, you know, the, it literally is real going, oh yeah, I think there might be some violence if Trump wins, or there'll definitely be violence if Trump wins. Where's, oh my God, this is so terrible. We'll see cities go up in flames with protest because even when he was elected president, we had protest in Washington. We had the, we had the women's wa march, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, he hadn't done anything yet. <laughs> and they were already protesting. And so this is the left-wing tactic. Vote for the left, vote for Joe Biden, or unrest will follow. And while in my mind, voting to avoid unrest from the leftist political side is complete cowardice, I also know that many people are in fact cowards. And it will be a motivating factor that will help Joe Biden at the end of the day. And just to say on the same topic of contrast, it's funny how left-wing sources have been fear-mongering about white extremism and all of these phony BS narratives, like we saw in Kenosha and other places, one of those left-wing sources being being TYT, they just released this video right over here. And I'm just gonna preface the video by telling you guys it didn't exactly prove their point. If uh, President Trump were to lose on Tuesday, what would you do? He's not gonna lose, but what would he do? I have to accept it. And um, I'll probably move. Well, we just keep praying <laughs> that, that it goes our way. I see. So we've got, we've found some people that are saying there's going to be, but then we've managed to find a few Republicans that are, you know, a bit more chill and they're kind of like, yeah, if he loses, we'll accept it. There are people banging on the door of ballot counting places, demanding that they stop counting, disrupting the electoral process. Yeah, like a bunch of old people who obviously are like as if these old people are gonna be like, yeah, we're, we're gonna just we're gonna tear it all down. Let's go. Right, let's get let's get an orange soda, okay? I'm gonna need an orange soda for this for this little uh, thing. Okay, let's uh, let's continue anyway. Let's see if any of them have got the revolutionary spirit within them, though. Well, I'll tell you, I'll be crying a hell of a lot because I don't want to live in a communist country. I'll be very, very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> that woman said it would be a communist country. That's like unhinged. She said it was a communist country. And it for my children. And, and why? I think. Um, we want. Yeah, we've got all these chill Republicans that aren't going to do anything. I will not live under communism. To them to be proud of America, proud of um, what this country stands for. And I am very worried that they will be taught uh, not to be proud of America. Scramble to figure out what we can do to circumvent the situation, at least keep it from getting worse. 
scramble to see what we're going to do. Scramble to see what we're going to do. What is? What does he think that means? I don't think he's going to lose, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> but but if he does, it's same thing that happened in 2008. I'm going to wake up the next morning. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day, and I'm going to keep going on with my life. That's the Republican perspective. Oh, Joe Biden won. All right, well, that sucks, but we should probably go on with our lives. Whereas the Democrat perspective, I mean, not entirely, but in a much greater degree, follows more something like this. Donald Trump won the election. And so look, it's coming. If Trump... Okay, so the leftist, so the leftist meltdown that we've actually got is just like that. <laughs> yeah, we're cherry picking. But also, also, the, the like, where's, where's the lefties? The title of this video is Leftists Are Going Insane. Where where's in this video? Where are the where are the insane leftists that we were promised? Wins tomorrow, or if there is even the red mirage, which is the phenomenon of him winning before all of the mail-in ballots are counted, expect major violence. Andy you No know, just released this right over here, vague ominous post in Portland Antifa Telegram chat room. Quick reminder that it's totally cool to chill out for a couple days in preparation, catch up on Netflix, hit the shooting range, go hug your family. Big things are about to go down. And so you know it's coming because first of all, it's the normalization of violence that we've seen on the left side of politics, and second because they openly tell you that they're going to do this. They've been talking about firearms as well and escalating the violence to a level that we Wait, have not seen. This guy is the type to play Among Us, but quit the game if he doesn't get imposter. Wait, do people do that? Oh yeah, the libertarians have ruined this. There's there's actually like some potential evidence that the libertarians have totally screwed this. Seen before. Question is, where's Joe Biden? Could you imagine if this was on a right-wing chat group? What would be going on right now? Gretchen Whitmer would be all over the news talking about the president's rhetoric causing domestic terrorist violence. Oh, and might I also add, that's kind of funny that these <laughs> communists want to catch up on their Netflix. Have commies not realized that in a communist system, <laughs> there is no Netflix? There's Oh, got him. Hey, did you know that under communism, there'll be no entertainment, essentially. You'll basically have a brick wall to look at, and that's it. You'll enjoy your brick wall, and then you'll get your daily ration of a scrap of bread and a thimble of water, and that'll be it. And then you go to sleep on the floor. That's communism. There's no entertainment industry. There's only state TV with a woman yelling at you from morning to night. <laughs> But look, it begins. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That's exactly what it would be like. It's already started. You might have seen this tweet on my Twitter if you follow me there. If you don't follow me there, you're missing all of the memes. There is a video circulating right now of Antifa and BLM harassing people and blocking voting polls in North Carolina. They've already started intimidating people on their way to vote. You think they're doing this in Democrat districts? I highly doubt it. You think they're doing it in California or Oregon, New York? Of course not. They're doing it in a state like North Carolina, maybe Georgia, Florida, places that are going to be neck and neck, places that the president needs if he's going to win in 2020. And who knows, maybe we're going to see a greater mobilization of this on November 3rd. I'm recording this on November 2nd. You're seeing it probably on November 3rd. This might be part of their plan. It's absolutely despicable. Once again, where is the left? Could you imagine if there were right-wingers harassing and trying to block people from polling? They talk a whole lot about voter suppression. This, my friends, is not only voter suppression, it's voter intimidation and domestic terrorism. Where's the left? Of course, nowhere to... Wait, but what is, like, what is this? What am I looking at? What am I looking at here? Like, it's just, I don't understand. It's like a still image of like a group of, a group of black people. They, they, they always do this. They have like a, an image or a video. OMG, is this actually the good time, LeMay? Yes, this is, Catalina. Thanks for the bits, appreciate it. I don't really... I don't know what this is. Sorry, I don't have no idea seen. what this is. We've got this story from the Daily Mail. Sad face of election 2020. Cities and White House board up and brace for election riots, looting and a drawn out vote count as Australia and Canada tell their citizens to steer clear, except they're already banned from the coup. And so Democrat cities across the entire nation, businesses are fearing for they're their- They're carrying a PA system. Yeah, I've got no clue what was going on in that picture. Their livelihood. The White House has erected a massive, quote, non-scalable wall and is on full lockdown. Is that because of the threat? 
threat of vicious right-wingers? Of course not. It's the same black bloc agitators that we've seen on the streets over the last couple months. In fact, we've seen them over the last couple years, and Andy Neil has tried sounding the alarm for years at this point, and nobody listened. This is what happens when you don't listen. This is what happens when Democrats play 2020 politics and refuse to stand for the right thing. This is what happens when they choose party politics, partisan politics, attacking the right side at every corner instead of standing up for the right thing. This is well, why yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, look, this is total nonsense. Like, we all know. Like, look, hopefully I don't need to point out the obvious, okay? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine what an absurd idea? Right-wingers being violent in response to election results. Could you imagine right-wingers blocking polls? Could you imagine right-wingers trying to subvert the election process? So absurd. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is obviously, you know, this is obviously a few days ago. Now, what I'm, the thing is for me is I was expecting some triggered lefties, but we haven't had any yet. The modern left is so despicable. Talk about left-wing violence, attack on groups of people, everyone except for conservatives and Trump supporters, marauding BLM goons throw liquor bottles, point guns, bust windows, and steal flags from Trump caravan. Video shows terrified kids in a truck as it was attacked. You don't hear a single peep. You don't hear a single word. But on the front page of Twitter for the last how many days and all over the news, people are talking about how the Trump... This is by Jim Hoft. I know, I, rec I recognize that name, Jim Hoft. I think he writes for the Gateway Pundit. Is that right? Yeah, Gateway Pundit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought as much. I thought as much. The Gateway Pundit is an American far-right news and opinion website. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting one, isn't it? <clears throat> Good source. The Gateway Pundit. Questionable source. <laughs> always. Always. Extreme right. Factual reporting. Low. <laughs> it's always the way. And you notice they cut that all out. So unless you know that Jim Hoft is the fucking voice for this fucking piece of shit organization, you wouldn't know what that's from. You would just assume that that's correct. Oh, it's a headline. It must be legit. Well, no, it's from a completely farcical fucking news organization that, um, you know, has a factual reporting of low. <laughs> Detailed report. Look at this. It goes into it here. <laughs> Extreme right propaganda conspiracy can some fake news. <laughs> but yeah, where's the where's the actual video of this? Anyway, it's yeah, complete nonsense. Um I don't know about this story, I don't know what the situation is, but listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna convince me that this is legit, you're gonna have to come to me with another source, okay? supporters tried to quote run Kamala Harris's bus off the road when literally all they did was just drive alongside her painting the picture that Trump supporters are violent acting like a bunch of goons when they've been largely peaceful and even that was a peaceful protest I made an entire video debunking the leftist narrative but the FBI is investigating it Jack Dorsey puts it on the front page of Twitter for what is it like three days straight now that specific story has spread to maybe like 10 million people at this point probably even more it's affecting the minds of the electorate influencing the way that people are going to vote. Meanwhile, stories like this, which happen nearly on... Um, yeah, I mean, this is obviously ridiculous. Like, Jack Dorsey does... I've got my criticisms of Twitter and Jack Dorsey, but, like, he doesn't personally select. He doesn't go, go in in the morning and personally select which story. It's, it's algorithmically done. It's all based on, you know, what people are talking about and stuff. So this idea that Jack Dorsey personally selected the story and put it on there is just fantasy land weekly and sometimes daily basis depending on how contentious the news cycle is you don't hear a single peep it's completely disgusting there's really no other way to say it the left is complicit joe biden is a coward kamala harris donated to their relief funds and is basically or at least seemingly right alongside the doctrines the beliefs and the rhetoric that they seem to push out but none of that matters don't look at that american citizen orange man bad and we must take him out of office and if you don't be careful because we're going to smash your windows and burn your building down to the ground that is the state of 2020 politics voter intimidation through threats and acts of violence that is not supposed to be the norm in western civilization we rose above that a long time ago but the modern left is taking us right back to a more barbaric time so when the biden campaign comes out and says under no scenario will trump be declared a winner on election night even if it's overwhelming it it's funny how you don't see a civil war right now yeah i don't know what's gonna happen 
What's this? I don't know who Emily Larson is. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take anything uh, you know. I'm not gonna take anything as red that this guy's throwing up. I mean he's already given us an absolute dog shit sauce already. It's a dog whistle. Even if the victory is undeniable and the mail-in ballots cannot overcome the net deficit, they will refuse to admit defeat. And I can pretty much guarantee you one thing, they'll also refuse to call back their leftist goons riding on the streets. I could pretty much promise you that one. And at this point, it's not necessarily a hard prediction to make. It's exactly what you'd expect. But that's what I got for you guys on this video. If you enjoyed it, then please make anyway, sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, hit the- Liberal hive mind. So we got that video there. Leftists are going insane. It's funny, like I don't know. I feel I feel like filing a, a complaint for a misleading misleading video title because he's saying leftists are going insane. Where are the insane leftists? Where where were the triggered lefties? I was hoping for like look, look, look at the uh, look at the thumbnail for this. Yeah, exactly. Who is it that won't do, admit defeat? hang on a sec, who is it that won't admit defeat? Remind me again. Look. Look, this is this is ridiculous. We didn't have this guy in the video. I thought we were gonna have this crying dude. This crime person here. All we have was some dog shit meme and then some nonsense for 10 minutes. Terrible. Anyway, listen up. So, we had, uh, you know, we had the Trump landslide, left us going insane. And then, then, good people, then my good lefty friends, my comrades, my liberal, uh, you know, acquaintances, shall I, should I say? <clears throat> this is where the cope starts. This is where the cope starts. This is where the cope begins. Leftists going insane, Trump landslide. It's not over. It's not over yet. Trump could still win Arizona. It's not over yet. Audit every vote. Dems did not win. Election. Total scam. Antifa turn on Dems. <laughs> the, <laughs> the hope becomes cope. Yeah, yeah. You've got the hope and then you've got the cope and then you've got... You've got... Okay, this is it. This is the, this is the thing, okay? You've got the cope. Then you've got the hope. And then you've got the rope. <laughs> That's so dark. I love it. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. The cope is fast becoming the rope. <laughs> oh, they use the same thumbnails because apparently that's what works. Election's a total disgrace. Okay, let's watch this one anyway. The election is a complete disgrace. The election is a complete disgrace. <laughs> oh no! Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal He was He was so certain in his little video, Trump's gonna win in a landslide. I mind. A channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. All right, so it's almost one o'clock in the morning and I've literally just been sitting at my desk trying to get every single possible update with the important states. And what I have to say is, it seems as though the president never really even stood a chance with this mail-in ballot fix. The state of Georgia is on its way to going blue for Joe Biden. The state of Pennsylvania is on its way way to Joe Biden after a 700,000 vote lead with nearly 80% of the vote already in from last night. Faith in the American electorate system, I believe, has been forever damaged. In what universe does Joe Biden, the man who can't even string a coherent sentence together, win a historic amount of votes? It just doesn't make any sense, folks. The way this election played out is a complete disservice to the American people. Every single state played out the exact same way, at least all of the key states. The president gets a massive lead and the mail-in ballots trickle in just enough to get Joe Biden above by the skin of his teeth. And the American people are bought. Okay, so yeah, let's let's just make this clear again, okay? Let's make this clear again. Donald Trump and the Republicans hedged their bets, right? Because they knew that mail-in ballots would favor Democrat votes, right? So they made a wager. They, for the past few years, have completely denigrated the concept of, of mail-in ballots, right? And the wager they made was that although they would lose voters, right, by doing it that way, 
Um, because obviously, if you've got the president, the leader of the Republican Party, telling people not to use mail-in ballots because they're fraudulent or whatever, or sorry, saying that like mail-in ballots are fraudulent, that's naturally going to lead to lots of Republicans choosing to go and vote in person because they're worried about this myth of electoral fraud, right? So, unfortunately, it's backfired. Well, we, we yet to see what happens, right? But they've basically been building that narrative for years. So now they can pull the trigger on this meme of, oh, it's all fraudulent, it's all nonsense, right? And you heard it in that video that even Liberal Hivemind did, where he said Trump's going to win unless there's any funny business, right? So Biden wins, potentially, right? And it's, oh, well, that was obviously due to funny business, Yeah. And then they can pull the trigger on this 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 narrative now they're trying to spin of, oh, it's fraudulent, oh, it's nonsense, it's not correct, yada, 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 yeah? Um, anyway, let's continue. Buying it. Think about what happened over the last couple months. The Democrats have done nothing but politicize tragedy, use race, police brutality, specifically in Democrat cities, and use a damn global I guess all pandemic those strangers to pin actually everything delivered on the, the GOP, mail. and more specifically the current president, turn everything political, use it as a cudgel to attack him for months before the election, and outside of that, dramatically and radically change the way elections work in the country, of course in the most important states in Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and North Carolina. Frankly, it's ridiculous. It's playing out pretty much the exact way that we've been saying it will for a long time. There's no real way to trust these results. There's no way to go through every single vote and understand where they came from to make sure that they're legitimate. How can you possibly vet all of the results now? The state of Georgia was looking like a lock, and now Joe Biden in the final batch of mail-in ballots that are being dropped on the state, mostly from Fulton County, are skewing 80% in the favor of Joe Biden. If that continues, he will take over the state and he will win. As I'm recording this video, it's going to be different, obviously, by tomorrow morning, by the time you watch this. But as I'm recording this video, Trump's lead is 31.5K in Georgia. And we have the exact same thing happening in Pennsylvania. Here's what the Democrats are saying. Pennsylvania, 763,000 mail-in ballots yet to be counted. Overwhelmingly Democratic. Biden will win PA by a comfortable margin and when he does it's over and what CNN just reported is that 80% once again 80% of the ballots that are coming in in this final ballot drop are in fact for Joe Biden if that rate continues he's gonna win the state of Pennsylvania comfortably by potentially two to three hundred thousand votes potentially even more if we go to predict it Joe Biden at 87 cents to the dollar Trump at 20 cents to the dollar every single state is looking terrible, 85 cents to the dollar for Pennsylvania and 65 in Georgia. The Democrats ran the most dishonest campaign I've ever seen in my entire life. We've covered every single element from start to finish. They've lied, they've politicized tragedy, they've blamed everything on the current president, and the entire time, big tech and the media has been complicit in all of their actions from start to You won't be disappointed. Hey. I like it when the robot lady says po chomp. Po chomp. That's very posh way of putting it, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, this is, look, let's call this what this is. This is, this is just code posting. This is just code posting, right? There's, there's no, you know, you look at, at literally any accusation, anything that they say is, oh, this is voter fraud, right? And you look into the details. It just, you know, it just turns into dust in your hands. There's no evidence. The best they've got is fucking fantasy conspiracies about Sharpies, right? Is fantasy conspiracies about Sharpies and blurry videos of people stamping things in polling stations. Right? That's all they've got. That's all they've got. Yeah, they got they've got like oh yeah, what the, Biden's vote count jumped so much. Can the robot lady say Schadenfreude? Schadenfreude, she can. Oh my god. The robot, listen, the robot lady will be replacing me from here on out. Okay. This is just fantasy. This is all fantasy, okay?
This morning, my mum was mad because they're taking Republican ballots and trashing them right in front of their faces. They're not. They're not. I'm sorry, but it's fantasy. And I've seen, listen, I saw some, I saw, I can't, know, I can't remember who it was. Some like, some post left dickhead. Like it was post, and I think I think they even like voted for Trump. But they were pushing this ridiculous meme of like, oh, they found loads of Biden ballots. Like, fuck off, come on. Look, I'm not a fan of the Democrats. I'm not a fan of fucking Biden, okay? I've been clear about that from the start. I've been clear on my position. But this fucking, you know, spreading this ridiculous misinformation, it's just fucking absurd to me. Finish, they have played backup, they've played defense for Joe Biden, and they've gone on an all-out assault against the president and used fear-mongering tactics to mobilize unheard of voter turnout in this unbelievable new election system. And obviously you know what's gonna happen going forward. Every single election now is going to be a mass mail-out ballot election. That's exactly what the Democrats are gonna push for. All of these Democrat states are going to keep doing this. And who's to say that it wasn't rigged from the start? Who's to say that there wasn't a total mobilization of ballot harvesting ensuring that the Democrats had the votes that they need in metropolitan areas before the counts were even in? I mean, we pretty much knew exactly how many votes the president was going to get in Pennsylvania based on voter registration. Most of the modeling was showing that he was going to get about 3.2 to 3.3 million. We've covered that before. He did. And now he's potentially going to lose because the Democrats are on pace to get what, like 3.5, 3.6 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania. Where does that come from? We're seeing Minnesota and Wisconsin having 89 to 90% turnout, something which has never happened before. And so the Democrats have done exactly what Democrats do. They've taken advantage of low information voters, journalists, the media, the algorithms, and still Silicon Valley are complicit in this effort to swindle American voters. I've never seen so many anomalies in my entire life. The president made massive gains in every voter demographic that's important. Every single one that the GOP needed in order to have a stellar election night, just like he did in Texas. And Wait, that's, that's, that's incorrect. Like the, the, um, hey. Truth is game was rigged from the start. Very true. Thank you. Thank you very much for the bits, Heralds. This is hospital grade copium. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. This is a really good point, okay? And this is why, okay, this is why these conspiracies are just absurd on the face of it, right? It's very simple. So, first of all, you're right. The Democrats, simultaneously useless idiots who have spent years in government and gotten nothing done, and pulling off the biggest election fraud in US history during a pandemic, okay? So, that's the first point, right? Now, the second point, the second point is this. is that if the Democrats, right, were so big-brained, that they could just commit election fraud like that. Why, why, why don't the Democrats just win every single election? Why don't they just fraudulently win every election? Doesn't make any sense. Like, when you think it through. It's, it's like... Why don't they just win every time? Why, you know, why haven't they, why, why is the Senate still tied? Like, why is that not, why have, why have the Democrats not got like an absolute smashing win in every single aspect? Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't for, yeah. Why would they make the margin so slim? Yeah, they did election fraud to, ju you know, and obviously they, this is the thing with conspiracy. Yeah, they lost house seats, exactly. But this is the thing, right? And this is the beauty of conspiracy theories. And you see it with things like 9-11 conspiracy theories as well, as well, right? Any aspect or anything you point out, it just becomes part of the conspiracy, right? It just becomes part of the conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. Why don't they get... They, the Dems hate Mitch McConnell, right? Moscow Mitch, they call him, don't they? The Libs call him Moscow Mitch. Why is he still... They would have got rid of him! Right? <laughs> yeah. They rigged it. It's, yeah, they'll say, oh, they rigged it, but they couldn't do it, so it's obvious. And, but it's like, to rig it to this level, to this precision, right? So they literally just, just eke out a win. It's just, it's fantasy land, yeah? Here's the real truth. The whole fucking thing is rigged, yeah? The entirety of it. Forget all this voter fraud and shit, right? This is the thing. They make you focus on this. And they don't make you think about how fucking absurd it all is. This fucking electoral college shit, right? 
And the fact that you go to the ballot box every four years and put your cross in the cross of the box and put it in the fucking thing. And there you go. There's your participation in politics done. Oh, yeah, if you fancy it, come back in two years for the midterms. But don't worry, it's the presidential election that really matters. Right? That's that's the true, you know, look at, forget, forget about the, the ele- election shit. The system is fucking rigged, okay? Think about the system is rigged. But this is the problem with all of these channels. They don't want you to think about that, right? Forget all that. Just look at these little bullshit things here, you know? Anyway, let's continue. In Florida, he made gains in. And then somehow, <clears throat> magically, he does incredibly well in Iowa. He does incredibly well in Ohio, who had normal election integrity. They did their elections. The votes were counted effectively, and they didn't have these delayed mail-in ballot systems and mail-in counting. He wins by 6 what, 8%. And then just right north, in Wisconsin and Michigan, Joe Biden just gets a massive dump of ballots right at the last second to put him over. 20,000 votes. Because these votes that are coming in later... They're the mail-in ballots, right? And we know that they're weighted towards Democrats because the Demo- because it was Trump that was pushing this this kind of anti-lockdown message, right? This dude's video background looked like a bread tube video essay. It's just not yeah. It's just counting, right? Funnily enough. As you count votes that are weighted in one direction, guess what? The percentages start to change. Wow, incredible. It's in Wisconsin and exactly what he needed in Michigan. The massive tragedy in Michigan is that John James lost his race and Joe Biden takes over both of the states. How are the American people supposed to trust the system? It, it doesn't, it literally doesn't make any sense to me. It's the shadiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Even if there was absolutely zero fraud. The timeline is so ominous. Multiple different outlets months before the election, as well as Silicon Valley warning. Jim Hoft, Gateway Pundit. This is again the one we just looked at. Do you notice as well? It's interesting, isn't it? Why is he, why is he not put on here that it's the Gateway Pundit? I wonder why. Is it because it's a fucking trash rag that isn't suitable to wipe your ass? After you've just had a shit. Is that maybe why? Because it's a piece of shit rag. It's cut out. You can't tell. Unless, you know, unless you, unless you know. You just don't know. ...of the Red Mirage saying this specific thing is going to happen. The president's votes are going to be counted first. And then all of a sudden, Joe Biden votes are going to trickle in. At a ridiculous margin, he's going to take all of these states. And the whole country is going to turn blue. And this is what the American people, at least Americans for Trump, have been trying to fight against since the start. Of course, calling out the system that it's open to fraud. You won't be able to trust the results in the end. It's going to destroy trust in American elections. It's going to create a further divide. And the only possible way that Trump can win with everything stacked against him is with the greatest red tsunami of all time and you know that happened the president got a ridiculous mobilization effort of republican voters he made gains with minority voters gop voters from what i understand voted at a 93 percentile for the current president and it wasn't enough it wasn't enough the democrats had it in the bag from the start which is why nancy pelosi was saying no matter what the outcome is on election night joe biden will be inaugurated president in january we saw the same thing actually you can see it on my screen right over here pennsylvania attorney general states outcome of the election is predetermined calls election for joe biden before election day the lincoln project all of these places with their very ominous 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 yeah the lincoln project probably is a good thing to reference there because like the lincoln project has been widely derided as like a grift because despite their their efforts to mobilize never trump republicans to vote for biden like what was it 93 percent of republicans voted for trump and that's in- increased from 90% from 20 from 2016. Why would you reference the fucking Lincoln project? Pennsylvania Attorney General states outcome of election is predetermined. Yeah, I'm sure that that seems legit statements even joe biden coming out himself once all the ballots are counted i'm going to win. And this is just supposed to be accepted. Americans are what is this when the count is finished we believe it will be the winners donald trump came out and said frankly we have won the election he explicitly said that and they're picking on this joe biden going when the count's finished we probably will be the winners what on earth 
These people are unhinged. What the fuck is wrong with these people? Oh my god. Yeah, it's the same night Trump said he'd won before it was over. Trump literally declared victory. Like, what the fuck? Oh, okay. Let's let's finish this fucking dog shit video. They're just on. supposed to move forward, losing trust in the electoral system for potentially decades to come. It just doesn't make any sense. And now we're headed into a massive legal battle, frankly, a waste of money. And the government, once again, will not be working for the American people, but just dealing with hyper-partisan BS once again. Endless investigations, endless partisan attacks, and no progress being made for the American people. There's gonna be recounts, there's gonna be investigations, audits, the Supreme Court's gonna be involved, and it's gonna be a massive spectacle for the world to watch. This is exactly what we've been warning against since the start. This is- Oh my God, we watched this. We watched this. This was just Rudy ge vaguely gesturing. Hey, thanks for the bits. If Trump really wanted to win, he would have cheated just like Joe Biden did. Sorry, sweaty. Sucks to suck. True. Thanks very much for the bits. Appreciate it. But yeah, this this video was like Rudy just vaguely gesturing towards conspiracies whilst claiming that there was like fraud going on. There's there's no evidence of fraud. No one has yet been able to produce any tangible evidence of fraudulent activity around this election. Where's the evidence? There is no evidence. You would thought, you would have thought if they're so certain, they would have absolute dynamite proof. Bang, there it is. There's your evidence. Yeah, that Rudy vid was out of out of control. Why mail-in ballots are fundamentally a bad idea. And every single state that had clear election integrity, namely Florida and Texas, showed a completely different trend than what we saw in the rest of these battleground states. What was he talking about there? Florida and Texas had like, what? I'm very confused by that. And again, this plays into the thing that I said, right? It plays into, it's very funny to me. It's very funny to me how this voter fraud is apparently only worth looking at and investigating and being concerned about in these battleground states, right? Surely you would be concerned about the deep blue states. You'd be like, hang on a sec. It, maybe they've committed voter fraud there to an enormous level to the point where they've t stolen the state and it should be... Like, why are they not concerned about that? Hmm, little bit fucking odd, isn't it? How it's very specifically these certain states that this fraud has apparently occurred. These other states, though, oh, the, the ones that are decided, the ones that are solid blue, forget about those, they're probably fine. But it's these specific states that Trump just so happens to desperately need to win. They're the ones where the fraud's happening, people. They're the ones we need to be worried about. Incredible. Incredible. Ridiculous. OMG, Absolutely Kevin Sorbo. ridiculous. And I'm just not buying it. Even. You know, a lot of people I think are not buying it. Pennsylvania right now, Thanks of course it might be different by morning, is slated to potentially go for Joe Biden. We're supposed to believe that fracking Pennsylvania just voted for a liar, a serial liar, who's going to increase their taxes, decimate their industry, increase their energy costs, is in complete cognitive decline with Kamala Harris as his running mate. Or of course the other way around, depending on how you look at it. How are we supposed to believe that? Fundamentally, how are we supposed to? To believe that this is a mess it was a mess from the start we've been warning them from the start but democrats don't care i've actually spoken to some liberal people and a lot of them feel as though there might be some fishy stuff at play here but they don't care the goal from 2016 onwards was get donald trump out of office no matter what and that is still their intention it's not guaranteed that they're going to do it he's still could potentially somehow win, but their goal from the start was power and power at all costs. And it's a damn shame because Donald J. Trump deserves a second term in office. He's done so much good. And once again, the media, Silicon Valley, has made it their number one mission over the last four years to hide anything that he does, all of his accomplishments away from the American people. If most normies, low information voters, understood what this president has done in his limited time in office, while the entire system worked against him, there's no way this would be the outcome. There's absolutely no way that this would be the outcome. The Democrat party- Th This is, yeah, this is like, this is totally unadulterated, 100% pure grade A co copium. Like, it's <laughs> literally clutching its straws. Do you remember when, do you remember when Trump won in 2016? And they were like, come on, Trump's your president, just accept it, accept the result. 
<sighs> and yeah, do you know what? Great point. It's funny how there's very slim mention of coronavirus. Very, very slim mention of the fact that coronavirus has caused all these deaths. And maybe that's having an impact on the outcome, on the people that are voting, you know, for the person that, that isn't kind of directly responsible for all these deaths, you know. I mean, look, the Dems maybe have got some criticisms you could make, but like inevitably the buck stops with Donald Trump when it comes to America's coronavirus response, right? Party has become the bourgeoisie coastal elitist party and Donald J. Trump has turned the GOP into the party of the working class and regardless of the outcome and like I always say coming from a centrist somebody who could vote left or right depending on policy oh, this dude says he's a centrist oh my god what a load of fucking shit the party of the working class everyone the party of the working class Imagine claiming to be a centrist when you just made this ridiculous unhinged video about fucking Trump and that. See, and depending on the actual person who's running, Donald J. Trump will forever be a historically incredible president in my mind. And I think even if his legacy is cut mm. short, history will remember him as such. But it's not over. Like I keep saying, it just seems as though the fix was in from the start. And let's see what happens in this court battle. I'm not giving up just yet. Even though things look grim, I refuse to give up on this president because this president has refused to give up fighting the establishment at hand who have done everything to seize power back from him. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider leaving a like, a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video, since that's by far the there best thing you can do to support the channel. And share the video as much as possible. We're still quarantined by the YouTube oh. algorithm. But of course, nothing will stop us and we will continue fighting this culture war, regardless of what happens in the next couple months. So I'm gonna get back. There we go. There, there it is. We're fighting a culture war. This is all culture war nonsense. Oh, there we go. Let's look through some of the comments in a sec. Yeah, the GOP should have helped the working class when they let the corporate donors outsource all the factory jobs to China and allow monopolies to flourish and kill small businesses and try and lobby against wage increases and cut free stamps. And yeah, exactly. Oh, there we go. So there's liberal hive mind. Liberal hive mind is just in an unhinged conspiracy mode at this point. A lot, a lot of them are. That's the only way they can cope with this, this, what's happening. It's very upsetting for them. So, if anything, I pity them. I pity them. And that's all I've got to say on that.